Um, hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Weekly Wizard. Um, I think today is episode three, and today I'm joined by the wonderful uh, data scientists from Misari, and that is Roberto uh, to my right and uh, Ulisa just below me. And um, I think just to start it off, if you could both quickly introduce yourself and 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 talk a bit about your background, like what what you've done before, like doing joining the crypto space, that would be very cool. Of course, want to take that first, Yuli? Yeah, so uh, I'm Yuli. I'm from Brazil. Uh, I live here since I was born, so never abroad. And like previous to previous to join Mesari, uh, I had a completely non-related to tech job. Like uh, I'm in, uh, I was an engineer for the oil company here in Brazil. Mm. So yeah, I, I, I've come a. I've made a big shift in my career, uh, joined Mesari and uh, starting to work with data like that. So, uh, but for me, like, has been a pleasure because, like, I love the blockchain space a, a lot. So, uh, that's uh, how I I came, I, I've become, uh, got a full job in, in the crypto. So, yeah. Yeah, my name is Roberto. I come from a traditional finance background. I was there for about four and a half years uh, doing risk management and a little bit of fund development. Uh, it went down the rabbit hole around mid 2019. Uh, started exploring you know, crypto in general as a as you know as like an equity. You know, like, oh, I can trade it as like I trade equities or bonds or options. And then quickly realized that Ethereum is a little bit more. Uh, comprehensive than just like an asset, you know, so I started learning about the ABM, uh, I started learning about DeFi, and then quickly realized that I need to leave my cushy job and join Mizari. So I joined Mizari full-time in March of 2021 as a researcher focused on DeFi, and then around maybe like seven months later, uh, I started heading the, the data science team and then grabbed this wonderful man, Yule, to start building some wonderful Dune dashboards uh, for us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I've joined Mesari, I think it was October last year, so that was my first job in the crypto space, so, uh, yeah. And I was really lucky to find Mesari, because, like, uh, Roberto can talk a little bit more, because, like, uh, it was such a coincidence of once, you know, like, <laughs> I was starting to doing uh, Doom dashboards, like, for, for myself, and, like, uh, Mesari was looking for someone to uh, explore the on-chain data, you know, like I, I, I don't even realize that they uh, had the idea what it would become uh, at the time, but like, yeah, so. Yeah, <laughs> just like, we need somebody who's good at this Dune thing, like, let's, exactly. let's, let's grab someone. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, interesting that... Um, yeah, it's, it's just like the collection of people that are that that end up in the people uh, in the crypto space is always interesting. So um, uh, I, I like what does Misari actually do? Like, why why is there a data scientist team at Misari? Like, what's what's Misari's uh, mission and like, um, what are they doing in crypto space for for those people who are not familiar? Sure. Yeah. So so we're a data aggregator and market intelligence company, and with a goal to organize uh, crypto information at, at a global scale. Um, so that we can present it to everyone so they can navigate this uh, new digital economy. Um, and the extension of like why we have a data science team now is very natural. We're like, we need to find ways to extract data from different data sources, in particular blockchains. Um, because it's very simple for us to aggregate market and market data. And then, you know, we talk about prices and volume, things like that. But there's this other huge component in the space that is blockchain, like on-chain information. So uh, the data science team was kind of born to tackle that area of let's, hey, let's have a team that can do the, the on-chain data and also like aggregate in such a way that is contextualized so our users can ingest it and then make decisions based on that. Okay. So before, like, I don't know, like, um, I think you've been venturing on on-chain data for, for, for a bit now, but before that, it was pretty much like all just market data. So you were having like order order flow and like price and like maybe like token distributions. That's already kind of on chain, but like lockup lockup periods and stuff like that. More like more like from a like 
financial market perspective and not so much like the the on-chain market perspective is that kind of correct exactly. okay exactly yeah that's exactly right uh our focus i mean it's yeah. because of our data our data vendors were mostly on the on the market side you know coin metrics coin market cap mm -hmm. uh uh Tyco, and then now we're venturing more into like let's just get all the data from all the blockchains you know? yeah yeah it's, it's yeah, all like, on the chain uh, our annual, and our analysts had like a really hard time like understanding the protocols uh workflows and kpis you know like the how 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 the tokens move inside the protocol and like now with the data team like we can provide much more data for them to understand uh, each how each protocol works you know so okay uh, the data team in this area like it's becoming uh each day more important as a, a resource internally you know like yeah and are you hiring for new dune wizards at the moment maybe <laughs> yes yes we are we are yes, we are, we okay. are hiring okay. at all the dune wizards right now because uh i mean we, we can dive more into that and like how we're working our, our working relationship with you later but like yes we are hiring right now 100 percent. okay that's uh yeah we'll we'll make a i'll i'll make sure to include that link uh in the description <laughs> um, so i've been doing all the hard work on doing for Mesari, so like yeah i need help <laughs> you need some backups yeah <laughs> yeah are you are you the only one who's doing the 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 dune wizard stuff for Mesari at the moment Yula? right now i am but there are another uh, data scientist in Mesari that also can do it mm -hmm. like but uh, he's currently uh overseeing uh, other uh, types of data in Messari. So uh, right now, all the Dune is mine. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so um, that's Messari covered. Um, I, just maybe the last question, like what's, uh, what's the business model or like how, how does, how does Messari earn money or something like that? Because I think that's like, we, we haven't covered this aspect. Yeah, of course. The, so we have uh, different uh, subscription models. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, the you know the free version, which you can get like access to uh, a, a lot of wealth of data sets in in our in our website. Uh, we have a pro subscription, which is uh, more geared towards uh, you know a, a retail investor. It's about thirty dollars a month, and then we have the enterprise tier, which is more for uh, you know if you're like a hedge fund or you're a uh, or you're an exchange, uh, which is a little bit a little bit higher. So that's how we uh, broke apart our, our business model right now. Okay, I see. Yeah, and we also have a lot of free content that people uh, can enjoy, uh, like the quarterly report that we are going to talk very much uh, closely, which is free for everybody. Yeah, I've been I've been very much enjoying the the quarterly report, and um, but I think before diving into that, um, especially you, Roberto, coming from a, a traditional finance background, I think an interesting question to explore is basically. Um, how how does like data availability in in DeFi and in the crypto space in general compare to um, the like traditional finance world and, and like what are stark differences that it, differences that you could like make out directly? Yeah, I mean there's there's a there's a huge difference between the two purely because uh, I mean financial markets have you know, centuries of data sets and there's tools everywhere to like extract data very quickly. Uh, you know, put succinctly, if, if you're in working in, in asset management or portfolio management in traditional finance, you have a Bloomberg terminal. And a Bloomberg terminal has basically all the data that you can ask for for any asset that you can imagine. Yep. And you can get the data instantaneously. Um, I, I, that's still one of the biggest things that we're lacking in, in crypto. Um, so, like, for example, if I want to get TBL data, I have to go to DeFi Lama. If I want to get on-chain data, I go to you guys. So, like, if I want to get like fundamental data, I have to go to token terminal. So, like, there's no unified area or or tool that lets me pull all that information to do my analysis. It's still incredibly fragmented. Uh, now, I think that's a function of the nascency of our industry. I think eventually we're gonna we're gonna get there. But I think that's the biggest difference that I see is like the data availability component uh, for from a research point of view is a lot easier in TradFi than it is in crypto. So. Anyone in crypto that has uh, the ability to extract data from you know, either on chain or through an API or has some sort of like programming language, those researchers and those investment funds are going to have a huge advantage purely because they can get the data that a lot of people are not able to get. Hmm. That's actually that's actually not quite the answer I expected. Um, 
like you're saying, like the data access accessibility is higher. Like from from my perspective, it's like the blockchain data is like free. Like it's publicly accessible for everyone, at least like on certain platforms. And like mm -hmm. everyone can certainly go in there and uh, and like make their own analysis. Like even if it's like the super hardcore way of like I spin up my own node, sync it, and then just query against my own node. Um, mm -hmm. But but you saying so how many so how many people can do that? Uh, quite a few. <laughs> I mean, quite, quite a few, quite a few, quite a few people. But if I if I do the comparison to a Bloomberg terminal, I can just call a function inside Excel and then get terabytes of data. So the the it is it is a lot easier for me to extract data from uh, Tradfi because mm -hmm. the, I mean, the databases and the structure and the tooling to extract the data and for me to do analysis is a lot easier. When you compare that to uh, our industry, um, you need to like know SQL for like, for you guys at least. Yeah. Um, so a lot of a lot of researchers, uh, I mean, what we see even internally, like a lot of researchers don't have that that skill set. Mm -hmm. Um. And, and whereas like in the in the traditional world, it's gonna be like a download. You know, I want this field, this field, this field. Download, click, click, click. So that that component of infrastructure to make the data easy, um, easy to get is a difference. Now, the caveat here is like you said, is like blockchains are open ledgers. So like anyone that has a skill can get that data if they want to. So it's more open in that sense. It is it is more the tooling to extract the data that is uh, that is very different between TradFi and data. Okay, I see. Uh, I would add there that like uh, here in the crypto space we can go into the project and see how the the money flows internally, which in the traditional finance I think this is a little bit hard because like the company needs to be transparent and, and, and uh, allows you to have this data. And here in crypto, you don't have, uh, you, you don't need permission from anyone. Like here you can go into Aave or Compound and like explore all the pools that they have, all the uh, all the liquidity that they have, you know. And this is different from the tradition of finance. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's also an interesting, yeah. You can't hide shit in, in DeFi. Like, no. You're, yeah, you're, you're screw, like, there's a, like, I've, I've thought about, like, writing hit articles, like, using on-chain data in the past, but I've, uh, I've stayed away from it for now, but it's, like, there's a, there's a lot, because, like, I think there's a big problem of, like, uh, analysts are mostly incentivized to, like, publish good news, because it's, like, number go up, number is great, um, and, like, nobody really likes shorting, and it's, like, looked down upon, so it's, like, publishing negative news is probably, like, not, not a good way to grow your network, and, like, um, but it's uh, somebody should do that. Like, because like that's that's like the key part. Um, like if your product doesn't return the numbers it should, um, then it's not you can't hide it like somewhere in your quarterly report. Like it's all like live on chain. Like you you can see people leaving. Like if there's somebody who's leaving Compound now with sixty million, I'd be immediately able to spot that, and I'd be like, hmm, Compound, Compound, like you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in Wonderland, right. like you can look at all the data, like you can see what the uh, key, uh, stakeholders are doing, like everything is public. Yeah, sure. which is a blessing and a curse, um, as we've That's seen right. on on some on some recent examples. Um, That's right. Yeah, what do you think about like um, the like liveness of data with with this like quarterly quarterly like usual companies like they report in quarterly installments i guess is that like the, like yeah you you get what i'm saying like what, what yeah, do you yeah, think yeah. about that i i mean like it's just a uh, data availability from it right because like you have a lot of these companies in, in tradfi that have you know, this this big uh international not international um investor relations uh groups within the company and like they just report everything on a quarterly basis um so this, I mean, this is why open blockchains and open data is, is amazing because you can just track everything uh, on a daily basis and just have it in a dashboard for everyone to see. Um, I know we're going to dive into like quarterlies in a bit. Um, so like a lot of the quarterlies that we're doing is like actually following that. I mean, we're not really going to stick to the quarterly frequency, uh, but we're going to have some sort of frequency to write the reports. But the idea is to have essentially this, uh, this data available for everyone to see it at any time. Yeah. Yeah, with with the dashboards that we create on Doom, you can have like a evergreen data of everything that is happening. So like you can refer to the last quarter uh, report, like look how the uh, 
the project evolved from there to where it's today, you know, like, so you don't need to wait a new quarter to, to see how things evolved, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, do you guys want to dive into Compound or, or Uniswap first? Um, I'll, I'll let you decide. You is driving this. What do you want to talk about first, Yulis? <laughs> I think you can start on Compound because it was the first one that we've made and it's uh, the only one that we so far has like two reports already. So mm -hmm. let me share my screen here. Did you actually like, like usually in a quarterly report, you get like a like 90 slide PDF, like what everything, which, which like puts that thing into color. Did you, mm -hmm. do you guys do something like that in, as well? Or, or do you just like, here's like a bit of data and like, uh, go with it like there's usually like yeah. explanations uh, in in those like quarter reports correct yeah yeah so i think like uh, we're we're positioned nicely as as a company because we have um a, a massive research uh, mm -hmm. or, like branch in our team so it, it's great for like us data scientists to pull that data but there's still an element of uh you know contextualizing that data into like actual insights Mm -hmm. So our researchers spend a lot of time understanding more well, like this is how you compute revenue for this lending platform and this is how you compute revenue for this DEX. So the, the quarterlies essentially give you a contextualized view of the raw data that we are pulling from on-chain. Mm -hmm. That's what I think like our, we're, we're very nicely positioned to be the company that is producing this quarterly reports because we can infuse the raw data with these insights and then present that to our users for them to make a, a rational decision. Yeah. We need more. Awesome. I, think I, need, I think I need permission to share my screen. Oh. So. How the hell would I do that? <laughs> <laughs> this hasn't happened before. Um, I'm clicking on the button, there's nothing is happening. So I don't know if it's permission or not. Yeah, let me, let me check for a second. Technical um, issues. Can oh, I found try? where it is. No, no, I, I found the problem is that it opened in another window here. Sorry. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay, so there we go. Nice. I thought it was permission. Oh. This was the first uh, report that we had. Like, it's the compound one. So this was the first dashboard that we done. Uh, in Messari to grab data. Oh. I don't know <laughs> how to start it. Like, I'll give you a hand. I'll give you a hand real quick. Yeah, I'll give you a hand. So, what we're trying to do with this quarter release is uh, provide a consistent view across uh, subsets of the market. So, like, all lended platforms are going to have a specific, a specific. Uh, layout all decks are going to have a layout and if you notice that here what you is showing you is that we start uh providing pretty much like a table that contains all the information that we use to create every single chart that we're showing in the dashboard uh, one one thing that we noticed when we started doing this is that uh, the doing dashboards in general are uh, they have different layouts so whenever you go into one specific dashboard you have to basically learn what you're looking at across every single dashboard. So for us, it, it was very it was very important for the user to come in and have a very similar experience so they can very quickly start ingesting the data and understanding the data that we're presenting without having to like understand the organization of the dashboard too much. I see. So yeah, that's a that's a really cool approach and I'm 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 actually really excited to hear that. Because that's a like I I see the same problem in the NFT market to some extent, where it's like we have a million different NFT dashboards and they all like sli yeah. slightly report different data and you're like like how can I like make what use of this? this? Yeah, yeah, it's like there's a new data point, like but what does it mean? And it's like if you standardize it, then it's like really then you can actually like work with the data. So um right. yeah, yeah, really cool. So you like now you can take it away, sir. Yeah, can you can you I'm maybe just start to Boxer right now? I'm listening to you, but not to Boxer. Okay. You were were listening to him, right? Yes. You can't hear me anymore. Hello, hello. It might be. Um, I think it might be the stream. The stream is what might be causing the uh, the lag because I noticed that 
once you go live, we start getting this, this technology issues. You look, did you stop streaming? Does he not hear either of us now? <laughs> I think we lost. <laughs> no, he's, he's still moving. He's still oh, moving. I'm back. Sorry. Hey, Hello, hey. I know what happened. Sorry. Like, when I click to share my screen, I clicked so many times and like it opened many windows on the background. Oh. So, like, I couldn't see. Sorry for that. Yeah. <laughs> and like, Sorry, uh, only your age. Yeah. I need to, you guys, to recap a little bit. But you, you can. Now, you can hear both of us now. Yeah, now it's fine. Like I've open, I closed all the windows. Nice. All right. so we were just doing a quick overview of the of the compound dashboard, but I don't know if you wanna if you wanna talk about just go through it briefly. You know, maybe like two three minutes. Talk about like how you came up. I, actually, the process that you take to you know when when someone comes in and and, and we have to issue a, a quarterly. What is your process from research to end product as a dashboard? Oh, yeah, like uh, when you first initiate, like I try to see all the contracts that the protocol has uh, on, on Dune or on chain. And I starting to uh, filter uh, which data is relevant for us and which are not like uh, most of the time, I'm very concerned about the token flows uh, because uh, most of these DeFi uh, reports that we've done are about DeFi projects. So uh, the flows of tokens inside it is what the biggest concern we have. Uh, so we're starting by doing it by pieces. So like, for example, Compound here, like uh, I starting to look only to the deposits that they have. So I make a query to get all the deposits, all the readings the borrows and like I, I structure the query like to grab this data into blocks of, of, of code and at the end uh, of the query when I already have all the data that I want I like just uh, stick them together in one big table which has all the data that the protocol uh, that we can extract from this protocol so that's how I make these tables here uh, when you see it, it's like a big query, but like everything is divided by blocks that you can uh, analyze. So that's how, how I do it. Uh, so the, the compound one, like I, I started to look at a uh, main uh, performance that they have, like for example, deposit, redeems, borrow, repay, uh, liquidations, and like uh, add them all together to see how much outstanding deposits they have, how much outstanding loans they have. Uh, the interest they are paying for uh, the depositors uh, and the utilization they are, they are having, so. The, uh, the, the, the purpose of having the table um, at the top is uh, it was a very, I mean, it was a decision that we decided to make because we want to make this data also available to someone to download it very mm -hmm. quickly and very easily mm -hmm. so they can recreate a lot of the charts that we're doing in the bottom. So if, if you notice, our dashboards will always have our header, some explanation of the dashboard, and then a big, big chunk of like data table at the yeah. top that essentially feeds into all the charts that we create at the bottom. So like if anyone needs to download the data, uh, mostly our researchers, like anyone else in the industry, they can do it very quickly and then you can recreate those charts that we're creating for ourselves. Yeah, I see. That's, yeah, that's a, that's a very interesting, yeah, de design choice that's, that's kind of influenced by, by how you're working with, with like other teams and, and the space in, in, in more general terms. That's, uh, that's an interesting insight. Um, so, Maybe we can, I, I, I forgot to throw this in at the beginning, but maybe we can take a step back and like, what is Compound actually? <laughs> you you want to take that? Yeah, so Compound is a lending market that people can deposit their tokens. And it's essentially what the, the main function of a bank, like you can deposit uh, some of your assets and this bank, which is Compound, can lend these tokens to other people that will borrow these this, this, this assets and use for the, for their use. And they pay interest for the, for the bank, uh, which is uh, routed to the depositors. 
and, and the bank takes a share you know like so essentially what a bank does in the lending side of it you know so uh, that's what compound is okay so and and how many like deposits do they have today uh look at here the outstanding deposit well sir you have not seen our dashboard huh you would know that answer sir i i have seen it but it's like <laughs> i think uh if we if we walk through this like this like it, it might be uh It might Absolutely be very, angry. yeah, yeah, yeah. It might, it might be very approachable to people if we, if we do it this way. Um, I'm pulling your leg. Yes. Pulling your leg, man. <laughs> so there's. So, okay. Yeah, right now, uh, people are already deposit uh, 10 billion, uh, 10 billion dollars of, of value in into compound. So. Okay. Do we do we have a chart for that over time? Yes. Uh, All, all the deposits by tokens so you okay. can even see uh, which assets are being uh, represent the most of the value that uh one has so okay i i, I checked this the other day and, and and i think uscc usdt and dai were the most like uh popular ones um yeah. do you have an idea why why it's so popular to like What do you think is people's move here? Like, are they depositing stables and then taking out volatile assets in the like in the hopes of shorting the market, or do they like do they do something similar to that? Or like, what's your what's your like thinking here? What 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 is the what is the reason people are using compound like with stables especially? Like, I can see like why I would like put my ETH in there and then like I I have my like. I can take out stables against my against my ETH and then do something with those. But um, yeah, the other way around, like I was actually surprised to find that it was that many stables. Yeah, the, the stables are the one that pays better. So like people uh, like to receive yields on it. So mm -hmm. I think this drives most of the deposits that Compound has. And, and also like, uh, I think they are the most utilized uh, tokens on Compound uh, because this allows people to leverage on their uh, their positions. So they take uh, stable coins and invest it in other assets, which they can uh, even deposit again if they want, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, and take another a bigger loan on it and, and like increase the their exposure to one asset. So. Uh, I think when the market is in a bull market, like uh, the stable are going to be the most uh, borrow assets that we have. So. Yeah. Yeah. If we if we look at the the chart on the right, is uh, aggregated loans, right? So so that's the stables that yeah. are taking out on on compound. Yeah. Uh, recently, compound also had a. Uh, They they make a partnership with Coinbase, which allowed people from Coinbase to deposit uh, tokens in, in, into Compound, which uh, increased their reserves in USDC, I think. Oh yeah. Can you can you show us this on the chart? Like I I wouldn't be able to tell immediately where yeah, this could no, have been. I can't see. It exactly what it is but like they announced it so yeah i, I know that happened okay so what are what are people earning on these on these stablecoin deposits at the moment do we have a or like a, a historical i guess yeah we have a chart here on the interest they're receiving as a depositor like the supply side of the of the bank mm -hmm. uh Oh, no. we we need to go into individual uh, assets to to see it so oh, okay uh, because like uh, yeah we don't have an aggregate for the whole yeah, uh, yeah. compound ecosystem yeah so so yeah i guess um Like what are what are the key performance indicators or like if if you like 
if I'm an investor in Compound and I now want to look at like, hey, like how's Compound actually doing? Um, like which which charts would you recommend me to look at? Yeah, I think right now the most important metrics they have is how much uh, deposits they have. Like uh, what is the total value that they are holding there for you to be able to borrow and how much uh, people are borrowing. So like uh, how many loans are, are, have people have took and also the, uh, the rate between the two, like how much uh, so the utilization that a compound is receiving, which we can see here. So the blue line is everything, the value of the assets that compound has, that people has deposit on, on, on compound. And the blue is the, how much of these assets people has, has took as a, as a borrow. And we can have a rate between the two, which is the utilization rate, which tells us how uh, people are utilizing the assets that available on compound. Okay. And so and actually, so like, actually, forty yeah. percent of the assets that are deposited on Compound are loaned out right now. Yes. Yes. I don't know yeah, how it, that is in traditional finance, but that, like, on first, so, like, it sounds, it doesn't sound bad. <laughs> Historically, it has been, it has been much higher though. So yeah. Um, yeah. in recent times, uh, there seems to have been, like, I don't know, like, uh, yeah. It, just well, liking. we had some events uh, in, the, in the recent past that uh, people got liquidated. So mm -hmm. uh, it's the biggest fear of everybody that is lending money on, on Compound that we can see here, like in April when the markets tanked a little bit. Uh, we had like a bunch of liquidations on, on this uh, period. And, and right now, when the price of ETH and Bitcoin fell, also we had a, like a bunch of liquidation. And I think this affect the people mindset that like you can borrow as as everything that they are uh, putting as collateral there like so I think the, the component of utilization to coming down is uh, it's a reflection of the, the you know the recent market moves that we've had um, as you can imagine like when we are over, like we're, we're, we're tanking we're really like, literally diving down to to like really low the appetite for either uh, I mean if you're gonna short then you can short but like the appetite for like borrowing to lever up your position becomes a lot less uh, appetizing just purely because you know like going down like you're going to get liquidated for that. So uh, I think that component of liquidation also, um, or like utilization coming down is also a component of like our market environment. Um, and the other thing I want to mention too is like there's a there's the, another metric that I will look at for a compound in general is that, that uh, the amount of money that they take from that reserve factor from each one of the, um, from each one of the assets that they're borrowing which is how we're computing uh, the revenue, so or the or the protocol um, side, the 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 maintenance or the protocol side revenue is what we uh, what I will also look at. So not only like the supply side, but also like the protocol, the protocol side, the money that they're taking in from from uh, the lending and borrowing that's happening in the protocol. All right, I see. Yeah. I think I should explain this a little bit. Like for each asset that you uh, borrow, uh, part of, of the interest that you're paying are rooted to the compound, like to increase their reserves. And they use it like a, a phone, to, if something bad happened, or like also to pay for the protocol revenue. Uh, like there is a DAO that can govern how this money is going to be utilized. And, and we can see here, uh, how much is going to the people there, how, uh, what part of the interest are going to the people they are depositing, which is the supply side uh, revenue uh, that, that we are making out of interest, and how much is going to the protocol itself. So mm -hmm. uh, we break this down here, mm -hmm. this chart. And then we can see also which tokens are paying more revenue, uh, which are because uh, not all of them have the same uh, uh, reserve factor, so they contribute different for the protocol revenue. Okay, so so that like as like if I was on the compound strategy team, I would now look at this and I would see, hey, there's a big like gray bar. So DAI is really valuable to us because it gives us a lot of supply side revenue, I guess that is. Or is it like, yeah. is it both types oh, of revenue on the right chart? Both. Oh, it's. Yeah. Actually, it oh, says protocol revenue in the in the title. 
So that's yeah, actually really you know, good for for compound the DAO or compound the the project. Like that's actually like money in into their bank accounts or like wallets. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah. yeah, but the the revenue it goes both to the depositors and to the protocol. So like yep. uh, it's just a fraction of the of the, the interest that goes to the protocol. So here is the breakdown of the protocol itself, like for, for compound, but the same, uh, a bigger chunk of it is going to the depositors. Yeah. So like, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, we can we can see that distribution on the left, but on this like right hand side chart, uh, it's only uh, protocol revenue. Um, is, is that a daily chart? So on a on an average day, they earn like 60, 70 K just from their depositors is that like correct interpretation yeah, it's a it's a daily chart okay they're printing money <laughs> they're printing money yeah they're making money for sure <laughs> <laughs> that's uh yeah that's uh, that's pretty interesting but there is a cabinet which is the the graphs below which is they are also paying people to deposit there which is the incentives they are paying uh they pay in comp tokens mm -hmm. uh uh, so they, they incentivize people to deposit and increase the interest people are getting for, for depositing tokens. And also they incentivize people to borrow money. So they pay also uh, the low end side of the, of, of the equation, like incentivizing people to take loan and decreasing the, the amount they are, they, are, they are paying, you know. Yeah. So they, they receive in comp tokens, which uh, we can see here. We the the incentives are like this is our aggregate chart so like we can see that it's all increasing comp but here we multiply by the price of comp so that's why the sharp is a, the the graph is a little bit sharp you know mm -hmm. because it's multiplying by the current price of a uh, compound. Yeah, I see. Do do you have a chart somewhere that uh, subtracts the token or like the the protocol revenue minus the the incentives that are paid um not yet <laughs> okay that would actually be really interesting i think there was a big story about spell uh like two weeks ago or something that spell was profitable for the for the first day in their entire life basically because like the spell emissions were less or maybe a week or a month i i don't know the timeline anymore but basically they had crossed this like um they were basically making money for the first time if you like uh look at all the spell tokens they're emitting and uh looking at the revenue that's coming in and that's like it's a hugely important thing like to get to that point right because like your token emissions can't go on forever and like once you cr cross that threshold of being like hey like we're actually earning money of course we're still like giving out like not free money but like it's kind of like marketing expense, you could call it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Monetary, yeah, like yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Customer acquisitions cost. That's actually a better. Um, so yeah, like crossing that. Uh, yeah, I, I'd be really interested in seeing in seeing that chart. Um, totally. Yeah, we don't have like a evergreen chart like in Doom for this, but like in the report that Mesari makes, they put up a table which like it, this data can uh, it's aggregated in quarters. And we can see this in quarters, you know. So here we have how much uh, revenue they are making. Let me see here. At income. So that's how much they are making. And we can see here how much, uh, no, interest income. And I think we have a line here for how much we are paying as incentives. So we have the adjusted net income, which is the subtraction of both of them. Oh, okay. So they are not net positive at the moment. No. Because that, that is yeah, yeah. like the brackets around the numbers actually means a negative number, negative, right? Yeah. I've never understood uh, that. Oh, it's like, yeah. So <laughs> it looks better. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. This is, uh, and, and this, I mean, what Yuli just showed you is kind of like the, the component of data and also the, the report. Um, and this is where our massive, a very intelligent research team comes in and constructs this report to contextualize all the data that you're seeing on the on the dashboards. Uh, the so this is more like what you would see in traditional markets. But then the caveat here is that you always have you always going to have the Doom dashboard or like the dashboard evergreen dashboard to look at these things on a daily basis. 
which is an astronomical improvement when you compare it to the legacy legacy world. Yeah, and there's no like you could theoretically generate this via a script, like. If yeah, you if you if you build the right tools, like you could just like generate this from any arbitrary date to any arbitrary date, and like on on command, like there wouldn't need to be like uh, like PVC or like whatever KPMG wouldn't need to come in and like go through like terabytes of data manually and and, and actually do this. But it's just like on chain, and you can you can audit it at any time. So um, yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, yeah, what's your can what's you your guess? Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, what's your guys thinking in, in putting this in like this ancient form? Like <laughs> it, feels, it feels like is this to like um, basically I, I guess like standardizing the data, but that's already what you're doing like in the in the dashboard format. But then this is like to also like I don't know like get the like tr more traditional investors like to to understand these like newer topics in in like a, a format they understand or like just few elements here like one is uh the the written component adds a lot of context around the data that mm -hmm. you're seeing so you need to pick some frequency it doesn't have to be quarterly it doesn't have to be monthly it doesn't have to be like uh annual uh in our case what we're doing is we're doing it uh quarterly uh this is not to replicate what traditional finance has done but to an extent you need to have a certain kind of frequency and cadence in order to produce this kind of reports Uh, the, the other component is like, yeah, you're correct. So like if we're trying to be, like, as we started, one of our goals is to just contextualize all this information, organize it in such a way that like anyone can start navigating this new uh, digital economy. And when you present it like this to uh, investors, not only in traditional finance, but also like in crypto, you can ingest that information a lot more in a lot more simpler way. And like you mentioned, like you, I mean, you nailed it. If, a, if an investor from TradFi looks at this, They're going to see us a lot more familiar and a lot easier to to digest. Yeah, yeah, I see. That's yeah. I I actually um yeah. Now now that I think about it properly, like it actually makes it makes a ton of sense. And um yeah, maybe Dune should work on a feature which is like publishing quarterly reports on our platform. Like uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that would be that would be interesting. Mm. <laughs> Leave it that for leave it leave it for us. Like Messiah yeah. is doing a good job on that. <laughs> Let us handle that, okay? Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we maybe we can work together. Um, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very interesting. Um, I just another. What, what was I gonna? Uh, just one more thing that I would like to mention here on the on the uh, compound one is that. Uh, Here we have seen like the big picture of how compounded is, uh, yes, but like we can also deep dive on compound and look at it each in, into each asset that they have. Like so, we can go here in the micro financial statements, so we can see the same data but uh, uh, divided by token. You know, so I'll just show it a little bit. To to um like to to clarify these things like we the way we take but the way we approach our quarterlies is from a macro view so like that's a protocol wide view and a micro view uh, a more like either a collateral type when you're talking about a lending platform or if you're talking about a dex like a specific pool because each I mean like you can look at the protocol call it Uniswap as a whole and like how much liquidity there is how much CDL there is and also you can narrow down on like the ETH type here. And that's also like that also contains a ton of information. So the way we structure our our Doom dashboards in this case is to have that macro view where you can see everything that's happening in the protocol, and also you can click on the micro view, pick a collateral asset, and then look at all the statistics uh, that are related to that specific to that specific asset. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. And uh, especially, I think there's always moments in DeFi where like certain pools or certain pairs are in a lot of distress or like there's like interesting things happening in them and then it's like really useful to have this like we're just gonna look at this like um whatever pool or or like lending pool or uh liquidity pool and just really like hey like what ha actually happened on chain in that uh in that specific thing and it's really interesting to like really dig down into the data so uh, yeah i i love how, how you guys built this up of like hey we're gonna like take a look at this whole thing but then also like we're gonna go down to like almost a si like an individual transaction level i i think like the the time unit you're using here is like day 
but like it would be like a like a task of five minutes to switch this to like i'm gonna look at individual like minutes or transactions mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so it's yeah i, I really love it <laughs> That, that's like when Dune is so powerful for us because like uh, the compound one was the first one that I've made in Misari. Like uh, I didn't know exactly how I would do it, so I did it daily. But the uh, newer uh, dashboard that we have creating, you can select which uh, time frame you want. So mm -hmm. if you can, if you want to look it by day or by hour and select a, a time interval that you're interested on, like you, you can. Uh, filter this data in this way, you know, so uh, jumping a little bit to the Uniswap here, like you, you can choose here day, uh, week, month, and see uh, in a better format. Like some data is better view on daily uh, basis, but other data is better to look at monthly basis. For example, like uh, how many users are interacting with the protocol or it's better seen on month uh, basis, but like Price usually is better on our basis, you know. Mm -hmm. So you can choose here to, to look at the data the way you want. Yeah, yeah. The composability of this is really um really useful. Yes. And uh, big big shout out to Michael Silverling who has who has made this popular in Dune. <laughs> like, yeah, I would, I would like to make some. <laughs> I, I would like to make some shout outs here because like Michael is one that I like. I, I always look at his queries and like. Uh, I got him this from him, and like he he's such a good wizard. So yeah, there are other people that uh, help me on the, my way. Uh, yeah, yeah, but but he's we are, we're all standing on Michael's shoulders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So um. So I guess that that covers compound and um, one thing between those two protocols, like how do like how did this actually come to play? Like did Av did uh, compound approach you and they were like, hey, like we'd like to have like a d detailed financial report. Um, how how do these like deals deals come to come to fruition? Yeah, basically, yeah. so like uh, a protocol comes to us and they're asking, we would love to have a um, a quarterly report written about us. Um, and then part of the deal is that, yes, we'll write the quarterly report, but we'll also, um, if the data is available on Undoing, we'll also create a, a Doing dashboard for you to always keep track of it. So uh, that, normally that's the, that's the link. That's, Compound was like the first one, and that's, he kind of like was, they were kind of like the guinea pig in, with this whole service. Um, and now we're just seeing appetite from more and more and more protocols wanting to get this kind of coverage. Uh, purely because we have that, that really strong research team that can just aggregate all the data and then contextualize it into like one single report that encompasses everything that's happening in the world. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think cool. at the beginning when we f first came out with this idea of the quarterlies, I think Compound was not aware that they would receive a dashboard uh, with the deal. But yeah, I, I think this is a very... Uh, I think the dashboards are even a better uh, product for this these protocols. You know, like I think they want to show this data as a evergreen data. You know. Yeah, like there, there's merits to both. I would say, like there's a reason why why like uh, traditional finance does this in quarterly reports, and then there's also a reason why it's probably better if we can do this live. And like, mm -hmm. if if you just have like, because like you can't contextualize the data in every second, like you would need to have like analysts online 24 seven for all the protocols, like that's not really, that's not really doable. So if you just say like once a quarter, hey, we'll look back and we'll like analyze this and, and see like what has happened. But then in the meantime, you can always, you can always just like, um yeah, just look at the data and actually see, see for yourself and then you maybe need to figure out for yourself like what's actually happening in, in the quarterly and maybe there's like there's other like uh, kind of low-tech solutions but like still involving some tech where where one could solve that so like example have like a like a message board or something like embedded in, in inside of the inside of the dune uh, dashboard and just be like hey like this is the news in the last seven days in compound and like this might be why uh why the deposits have gone down or something or uh, yeah like um there, there's there's lots of ways to to basically Im improve upon the quarterly report but, but with the current methods like i i love that you guys are doing this and i think it wouldn't be manageable other otherwise mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's right 
so yeah, let's let's dive into Uniswap. Um, it's also just amazing yeah. what you've built here. Yeah, like uh, Uniswap was a totally different uh, dashboard from the Compound one because like the amount of data on Uniswap is massive. You know, like they have like almost on every block there is at least one swap uh, Uniswap transaction uh, on on Ethereum. So like uh, the dashboard for for Uniswap was uh, much more challenging than the Compound was. Uh, and here is when I took leverage of the abstract tables that we have uh, for for the DEXs and like most of this this dashboard is based on the abstraction table, mm -hmm. which is like I I think is the future on, on Dune. You know, uh, I I think as this protocol evolves, like the data is gonna get uh, ever uh, more complex with time with time. So we're gonna depend on these uh, abstraction tables that aggregate data from a, a bunch of contracts or or different protocols and like we're going to rely that uh, more to, to grab the data that we want to to make the shots that we want so uh the the uniswap is a good example of that so uh it has the same uh infrastructure the same uh uh presenting as the the compound one so uh here we look at swaps volumes like uh, key metrics that are more interest to to Uniswap uh, than uh, different from the the compound one. So, but the the architecture is the same. So, we have here a table with all the data that we use you use to make the charts. Uh, and we break down here by 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 version, and that's it. So. Yeah, again, um, if I'm an investor or a potential investor in Uniswap, what, what would you recommend? Like for the, the, like what kind of metrics should I probably look at? And I think, yeah, with, with like the Dexter trade table that we have, because we have all this aggregated data, there's probably also like compare, like comparisons you can make to other protocols and stuff. So maybe, maybe if you can dive into, into those aspects a bit, that would be cool. Yeah, uh, first of all, like you're putting us in a very hard position because like we are the data guys, like <laughs> we don't analyze this <laughs> protocol that this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, like, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, we can talk a little bit of Uniswap. So I think they, uh, they have two metrics that I think are the most important one, which is how many user are using Uniswap. So it's this first chart here on top. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the volume that uh, they are doing. I think those are the most uh, the metrics that are the most important ones for, for Uniswap. Uh, the cool thing about Uniswap is that uh, they launched a new version of the protocol. So like you can compare the uh, Uniswap V2 and Uniswap V3 in this dashboard. So uh, here is divided by, by each version. So mm -hmm. it, it makes comparison between the two very easy. I think you nailed it. Yeah, volume, volume. Uh, I would, the last one that I would add is like the depth of liquidity for a specific pair. I would also be interested in, in that kind of a uh, that kind of metric. So depth of liquidity, uh, oh, yeah. volume, because volume is directly related to the fees that the LPs are generating. In the case of in the case of Uniswap, there's no protocol revenue. Everything goes directly to the to the supply side, you know, point three percent, so like that. You can compute the the supply side revenue uh, directly from from the volume. So volume, uh, in the depth of liquidity, and also like the usage of the platform would be my top three as a as an investor in Uniswap. Yeah, I'll, I'll add a little one more a metric here that I like very much is the amount of markets that are being created on Uniswap because like. As these protocols evolve, like uh, a pool in Uniswap, it uh, stopped being just like a place for you to exchange your tokens when you want to make a trade as a user, and it became like an infrastructure uh, piece of the of the money Lego that all protocols use. So, like uh, we can see how many protocols are developing in Ethereum by how many uh, 
rules are being created because like it's such a basic infrastructure piece of uh, of 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 infrastructure for these protocols that uh, I like this data a lot, you know. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, Uniswap B3 seems to be much more of a like tool than it is a than it is a protocol in the end. Um, so yeah, it's yeah like every every liquidity pool should like every token pair that is tra traded will at some point probably have a Uniswap V3 um, pool somewhere. It mm -hmm. just seems very likely, but we'll have to see what curve uh, V3 three V3 two does. I don't know, um, but that's uh, that's beyond this conversation. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so with Uniswap, everything's going to the supply side actually. So. Do you do do it? Oh, there's a revenue chart. Okay. Yeah. So that's the revenue. It's break down by version here. So uh, blue, uh, and like you, you can see here uh, on the on the table here that uh, the protocol side revenue is zero. So if they ever make the uh, change in the parameters, so, so how much they charge for the protocol, like this could change in the future. This graph would reflect it. Yeah. Um, so what immediately stands out to me, it seems like V3 depositors actually earn a lot more money than V2 depositors, which is pretty interesting. Um, so yeah, th like that's, that's all the things you can learn by just like studying these dashboards. <laughs> but yeah, I, um, yeah. like you were saying earlier, like I'm putting you on in a bad spot and like, I kind of, I, I, I really feel that like as a data scientist, I'm always like, I'm pulling all of this data out of, out <laughs> of the blockchain. And then you're, you're sitting there like, Hmm. So what does this actually tell me? You're like, I don't fucking <laughs> yeah. like, I, I don't know, uh, like, <laughs> yeah, like smarter people than me or like people with a different skill set and who are like more used to like actually like making decisions based off this data uh, have to interpret it. So, so I very much understand the, the limitations <laughs> of, the, of the like questions, questions I can ask you here. Um, but yeah, uh, that, that's... it's okay. Like uh, one thing that Messari is doing is like when we put together a, a report, a quarterly report like that, uh, we sometimes make calls with the team. So like people analyze this data in deep, you know, like uh, how, what things are evolving, like what the key metrics they are looking into, you know, like uh, in a more analyst uh, talk, you know. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's why I think you need that, that element of uh, research involved in, in, in this process because we can get you all the data, but then you need someone that like ingests that and then just gives you the insight. Yeah, yeah, I, t I totally see. So how many, how many people work on a quarterly report? Like, like for example, on the Uniswap report, I guess it was you, Yule, on, on the data side, like just like building this Uniswap dashboard. And then how many research analysts are there on the other side, like trying to trying to coach you? <laughs> well, you know, once we have the, uh, the a template, which is basically what kind of, what are the metrics that are important for mm -hmm. uh, a, a DEX like Uniswap, then it is, it is just downloading the data and then writing the report. Okay. Uh, in this case, Jerry Jerry Son was the one that wrote the uh, the report for Uniswap. Um, in the first compound report was written by Ron Watkins, and then this following one is going to be written by by someone else. But like, what I'm trying to say is that we already have a template for okay. Okay. what compound yeah. should be. They just have to download the data and then write the report, kind of give the insights and just contextualize what's happening over the board. Yeah, I see. Oh, uh, yeah, the compound one was actually released two hours ago. It was written by Dustin. So, yeah, it's... There you go. Okay. So, yeah, we got two Dustin wrote the... Uh, nice. Perfect timing. <laughs> they have announcements today. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so... Um, yeah. I, I think one last... Um, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say that uh, Uniswap is uh, even uh, in, the dat in the data perspective of it, uh, like uh, Duniswap was a, a challenge because like as the amount of data they have, they also are uh, launched in different chains. So uh, this was uh, something that uh, was really nice for us because like we can exp use Dune to explore uh, data on other chains. So here we have Optimism one. And he's gone. I think we lost you. Yeah, yeah, we lost you here. 
Yeah, he's kind of coming back. He's moving, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's actually what I what I wanted to talk about as well. Um, wait, let's wait for him a second. Coming back. Yeah. Yeah, we heard something. <laughs> oh, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, okay. There you go, sir. Nice. Um, nice. Oh, sorry. Sorry, yeah. Your um yeah I, I was just gonna say like uh i saw in the unisort report there was also like arbitrum data in there um and i guess you guys have some other ways of of, of pulling the data um but what i look really forward to is like in the future when we will just be able to have like a drop down of like hey like let's look at arbitrum data let's look at unisort data when dune like when we finally enable this this cross chain query function and i think that that will really be a game changer because um like just being able to see like how does my product behave on different chains and like immediately being able to compare that data in the same formats and in the same like in the same way essentially um that that would be really exciting and i'm already looking forward to to seeing what what you guys can do uh with with that new feature yeah anxiously waiting for you guys to release more chains you know <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, blockchains, multi-chain querying. Um, I guess Solana data. Um, yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a good year for 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 our cooperation, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like um, uh, Dune, Dune only lives through its users, and whether that is individual wizards or um, whole organizations, um, in the end, it doesn't like it doesn't matter to mm -hmm. us, and it doesn't ma really matter to the market. Um, it's just uh, great that somebody is uh, surfacing the data. We'll, we'll do that. You just give us infrastructure and then we'll, we'll handle that. And I don't know yeah. if I know how to fuel it now. And there he is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think like I'll, I'll have a look in the chat and see if there is a few questions there. Okay. And then I will try to let you go. <laughs> um, yeah, no problem. No problem. Man. Great Alpha. Hey, nice to be here. Um, no questions today. Um, if there's, there's quite a few listeners, so if there's any people in the chat who have questions, uh, please drop them. And otherwise it was, uh, yeah, we did you ago. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, he just dropped the mic and like, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Time's up, man. <laughs> Time's up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> gotta, gotta jump to another meeting. We're not um, talking to you, Boxer. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was uh, it was a great um, pleasure to talk to you guys. Um, I'm, we are really happy. Like June internally is really happy about Misari building this great stuff and also kind of being a source of trust because um, that's what we sometimes see on our platform that there's like, who is this wizard? Like, can we trust him? Um, has this data been audited by someone else? And we just know that like if it's coming from the Misari analyst hub or like from from Yule and then somebody else probably checks over the data and we know that like the analysts are actually working with the data. So any like discrepancies would actually um, they would be seen. Um, so it's really nice to have like a like a reputable, I don't know, institution, even though like we don't like the institutions in DeFi and like yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> there is probably a way of like uh, of like not trusting you guys, but trusting the code, but anyone can go into your dashboards and audit the code itself. Um, right. But still like it, it just hugely helps. And um, yeah, we, we really love your stuff. Keep on doing what you're doing. Thanks so much for uh, coming on the podcast. And um, I will send you guys Max uh, in some in, in some near future. <laughs> Absolutely, Boxer. It's been a pleasure chatting with you, man. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Have a nice day. Yeah. Um, Bye bye, Yule. <laughs> so, okay. Bye, Yule. I'm not happy to you. <laughs> yeah. Take care, man. Bye bye. Bye bye.